guys welcome back to another interesting topic today's topic is about handshake based pulse synchronizer so before going to the topic make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so what does a pulse synchronizer do a pulse synchronizer takes a signal pulse from one clock domain and generate that pulse again in another clock domain that what does a normal pulse synchronizer does here we are using a handshake mechanism okay so before we discuss how it works let us discuss where it is used where a handshake based pulse synchronizer is used. So let us consider two state machines FSM A and FSM B. So FSM A updates FSM B through a pulse signal. So whenever FSM A wants to update, then it will say send a pulse signal to FSM B. As you can see over here, a pulse has been traveling from FSM A to FSM B. So what happens is that this pulse gets synchronized through pulse synchronizer. But if FSM A sends more than one pulse signal at a time or back to back pulses, the problem arises is that the pulse synchronizer cannot handle the pulses. As a result, we will get the wrong values at FSM B. So to avoid this confusion of getting more pulses at a certain amount of time, we will use a handshake mechanism. So in this handshake mechanism, whenever AG or BZ is being sent by FSM B, to FSMA based, based upon these values FSMA will understand whether to send the pulse or not. So now let us go how a handshake based pulse synchronizer works. Now let us look how this circuit works. As you can see we have two clock domains clock A and clock B clock domain. The signal is generated from FSMA which will be given over here and which will be converted into another clock domain clock B over here. So this is normal pulse synchronizer. So as you can see, we have a busy signal asserted to FSM A so that when should we send the pulse signal. So now before going to the uh, how this all works, let us look at this in detail. So what's happening over here is that these two muxes and this flip flop are fed back again. So a feedback circuit is there which is used to convert a pulse into level. So we are converting a pulse into level as you can see when S input is the pulse is being given then we will take the one from this multiplexer and give it to this Q and this Q is fed back again since a feedback signal hasn't arrived so it will be selecting zero so it will be selecting the Q again and S input has been passed because it was a pulse so the pulse will be passed from here and it will be fed back so a pulse is converted into a level using this small circuit so the outputs of this one will be so as you can see, when we give S input as a pulse, FA1 will generate a level as shown. Okay, I hope you have understood this. This is what happens. A pulse is being converted to a level. Now let us look what does a two flop synchronizer do. Here we have a two flop synchronizer FB1 and FB2. So when the level is reached at D of FB1, it will be converting into a clock B domain but there can be metastability. As a result, we are using this flop to cover meta stability okay so we are sending the data from here to here and we are getting our level back as you can see in this diagram that we have two different clock domains clock a and clock b domain okay the clock a is faster than clock b as you can see the time period of clock b is bigger than clock a as a result when fa1q is passed that this level is passed to FB1Q, we are getting meta stable condition because it is changing in it is changing in its setup time. So we are getting a meta stable condition. So this meta stable condition will settle after certain amount of time. So I hope that this will be settling to one. It can settle to zero, but I am assuming here as one. Understand this. So now this will be passed to FB2Q flop and we will get our correct results it will see the one over here and it will be high for some time and this fb2q is passed to fb3q so fb3q also got the pulse okay also got the level so we need to get a level from pulse back so we are performing an and operation with fb2q and inverted input of fb output of fb3q so we get our pulse back i hope you are understanding this we are sending a pulse to level and this level is being sent to other clock domain and from level we are getting our pulse back. So this is the circuitry which converts level to pulse back. So here as you can see that a busy signal is asserted high when we are sending the level to the clock domain. 
So whenever we are getting FA1Q as 1, then the busy signal is asserted. So how we need to deassert the we need to deassert the busy signal so that another pulse can be generated by FSM A. So when we get the level, we will send a handshake handshake to the busy signal. What happens here is that when the one is there, FB2Q is 1. When the level is on, then we need to synchronize it to clock A domain and convert this input to 0. So here as you can see, we are using the feedback output as the in as a select line for this mux. So this mux will select it to 0 and our output will be 0. And this will be fed to the busy signal. But this input is still 1. So we need to wait for the output to come back once again. At till that time the busy will be high and till the busy is high we cannot generate the signal. So now let us discuss what will happen here. As you can see over here when we got FBQ2, FB2Q as high then we will get FAQ2 high and which will be passed to FA3Q. When FA3Q is high what's happening? We are selecting 0 in the mux and this 0 will be given to FA1Q. So FA1Q gives 0 to this one but we are still having high over here so we need to pass through this flops 1, 2 and then pass through this flops 2, 3 and get our 0 over here then the busy signal will be 0. Till that time busy signal will be high and FSMA cannot generate another pearl signal. I hope you understood this. I hope you understood this. So let's quickly once again revise what we said in this. What I said that we need to convert from one clock domain to another clock domain but we need a handshake mechanism to stop a back to back pulses. So we are using a handshake mechanism. We are using two flop synchronizers that is FB2, FB1 and FB2 over here and FA2 and FA3 over here. So here what's happening is that we are first converting a pulse to a level using the small circuit using the two muxes and a flip flop output as feedback. So this is happening over there that we are converting a pulse to level and this level is being passed through another flop synchronizer and we are getting our output correctly over here and then we are converting back from level to pulse using this small circuit. I hope you are understanding and this feedback mechanism is used to indicate that we have received the pulse correctly. So whenever we receive the level correctly, correctly we send a signal back to clock domain A indicating that we have received the level. So when the level is being received, we are setting this value to 0 and we are getting back to 0. So when this we get FA1Q as 0, we are setting one of the R gate input as 0 but another input is 1. So one another input will be 0 when we pass it to this flop synchronizers and the level is 0 over here, then it will be passed here, then we'll get both as 0. When both of them are 0, then only we can get busy down. So when the busy is down, then FSM A can send another pulse to FSMB. This is what's totally happening over here. We are having a metastable condition over here. We are reducing using the flip-flop synchronizers. And you might ask why there is no metastable condition. Because the output is settled over here but the output is changing at the setup time. I hope you have understood this topic and if you want more about synchronizers, about different synchronizers, I have created a playlist for you as you can see in that i button or you can check it in my channel. And thanks for watching. Hope you understood and if you have any doubts, comment down below and, and thanks for watching and please make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on.